On this trip, we're heading to Elizabeth Island, which is part of the Sand Isles on Lake Macquarie. It's where they dump all the sand from dredging Swansea Channel. Last time we looked at Chris's brand new Bay Raider 17, which has heaps of storage. But what does he take dinghy cruising? In here I've got food, uh, food there, flares, flare book pack, it's my first day kit. My oh, goodness, it's an Aladdin's cave it in there. A, it is an Aladdin's cave. That's my cooking utensils. This is my cooking, my stove just, and pots and pans. Suitcase for going away. <laughs> and then I made this little table last week. That's here. And that's simply there so that when I'm cooking over here or on that side, I have here somewhere to uh, do my food preparation area. Very good. Neat. A bit more civilised than sitting it on your lap. There is a hatch you can get in there to empty it out if water ever got in there. You've got a metre right. of reserve buoyancy there. And then there's another bulkhead just here. So the same's repeated on both sides. It looks like we're going to rain, so I think you're going to have to put your... going to rain, so I'm going to put, put your... all this back there with me. rain was predicted and we just set up and now it's raining so we'll probably sleep on the boats tonight on the trailers and then set up tomorrow morning uh, bucketing down now yeah, it's sort of a little bit wet but anyway so there's heaps of storage where do you keep your bedding uh, at the moment I kind of divide food on one side food and cooking on one side bedding on this side these are American hatches that Denman imports. But they've got a nice O-ring all the way around the perimeter. And so when you tighten them up, they really clamp down and give you a great seal. So in here, I have my air mattress, which is, obviously I didn't have these tightened enough when it rained. I have my sleeping bag, which is probably now damp because I didn't have the hatch tightened. <laughs> Good on you, Chris. <laughs> In here, I have this bundle of boards. That's a tight fit. That are all canvas covered. Canvas covered boards. Wow. There's also odds and sods in here and there's a, a rowing seat there. This oh, yeah. is part of the standard kit. They give you this little board that fits in here in case I wanted to row the boat. Oh yeah. So I could sit here and... Do you incorporate that into the bedding as well? No. I'll put a cup up here. Pull that back. Tension that to there. Jam cleat on either side. And that just causes this canvas back. This is the first time I've actually used it in anger. <laughs> Because it is going to rain again, probably. It's going to rain again tonight. Put that there. Okay, so that's hooked on there. And then this. So. Sits on the bit. Pretty snug. And this will unfold all the way back and then I just secure it. So that just tensions there. Yeah. That would all go down here. And and you're uh, seven foot seven, aren't you? I am seven foot seven. So here I am, my head on the pillow at this end. Snug as a bug in a rug. I can sit up on it, pretty much. It's pretty good. Pretty comfortable. So it doesn't quite cover your feet. What are you going to do about that? I just bought a six foot by eight foot canvas tarp, yeah. which I have here, which I, I'm just going to see how it all works um, to keep me dry tonight. 
So the tent pole fits into the Rolex hole? Yeah, I did. I, I put some Sikaflex in there so they um, don't fly out at a thousand miles an hour. And you've got 220 litres of water ballast. So the water ballast is <laughs> under this floor here, between this floor and the hole. To fill the tank with water ballast, I unscrew this hatch here. Okay, so in here we've got the, uh, the suction for the bilge pump, just there. It does block up with anything that flows in. Yeah. It's simple just to, to pull that out and then I can un unblock the filter. Wait, wait. There's the bung just here. And you see, there's the ground below. So the water just basically starts gurgling in here like a yeah. jacuzzi. Once it's full, then I just simply put that bung back in, like so. And I've got to wobble the boat around a little bit forward to get make sure there's no air trapped in there. Put the hatch back on. So that's it, pretty much. How do you pump it out? So to pump it out, I pump here. Right. Just with a hand pump. Right. Simply pump up and down. How long does it take to pump out, you reckon? 20 minutes, maybe. What? Wow. It takes quite a bit. It's, <laughs> quite, it's 230 litres of water. Um, probably go fast if I was a bit fitter. Yeah. <laughs> the rain seems to have eased off a bit. It's still quite warm. Sean's got a Hartley 18. She took the cabin off and uh, he's left it in a rustic state and he likes rowing and sailing. Go on, put your back into it. <laughs> and for all those people that say we go dinghy cruising and we never row, here's an example of rowing. <laughs> A very broad boat to row. And that's Steve with his Bay Raider 17. Winds definitely die down a bit. No, I reckon it's alright. Yeah. yeah, it's done alright. Morning Chris. Morning Paul. Great yeah. sleep last night. Not really. <laughs> So after a rather noisy night where the local kids were messing around till at least midnight, the rest of the group are turning up for a day's sail. John's bought his RG15. There's Phil and Brenda with their Sun May 20. And Terry with his CLC pocket ship. Keep watching because if you've sent me a photo of your boat, I'll be showing them later. Here's Trevor with his Pathfinder. I think we're going to have a really good turnout. Hi Paul, how are you? I'm good. That's good. Another. I think we're going to have about 12 boats, I think, which yeah, is good. There seems to be quite a few. So, Steve, you've been doing a bit of painting by the looks of things. I have. I've painted the, the front and back decks with deck grip. And I've painted the inside of the boat with a grey paint, and I've also put um, some timber in front of the uh, seats. So oh, yeah, to hold stuff, stuff in. Hold the stuff in. Because that was all varnished before, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was all varnished then. The, um, Stuff used to fall out, so now hopefully it's going to stay in there. Oh, here's trouble. Here's Mr. Deb himself. <laughs> G'day, Paul. How Good are you, Marshall? I'm well, thanks. <laughs> yes. Long time no see. It, it, it must be at least nine months, six months, oh, nine months or something. More. Yeah. Probably over a year. Is it over a year? Yeah, I've well, been overseas last year. Here's Mark and his paradox. So at last we're hitting the water, a uh, bit of organised chaos really, the, the ramp's quite busy this morning, um, but yeah, it's all good, should be a good day, hopefully the rain's going to hold off, it is a little bit grey, uh, predict your 10 knots uh, easterly, so it should be a nice uh, reach all the way up to uh, Wanji Caravan Park, which I think we'll probably stop at lunch, and then we'll go on to the Sand Isles after that. 
just watching here because you do actually have to thread between the branches that overhang this little uh, river bit that goes out to the lake. And we've just missed it. <sighs> Well, there's not a lot of wind, as you can uh, no doubt see. It does look very dark and wet up ahead, but it is meant to be 10 knots, so um, hopefully that'll pick up a bit later. But it's uh, a good turnout. Should have bought me Jenica. John's got a Jenica, but he didn't bring it. Uh, that's what you do when there's no wind. But I don't have any oars. Have you got your route board on? That's what it's for. <laughs> <laughs> She's very quietly going through the fleet. Mark in his uh, trimaran. Uh, well, we just had a bit of an interesting time. I put a reef in, and as I was putting the reef in, the uh, shackle that holds the tack of the sail, uh, it's a spring-loaded pin, and the pin and the spring shot straight out over the side. So I've had to sort of uh, jemmy up something to hold the tack or the foot of the sail down. Just going around the end of Pool Bar Island. Uh, there's a few showers up ahead. We have had a couple of showers. Um, they're only light though, pretty light rain. Uh, and they don't last too long, so it's not too bad. It's quite warm. So uh, yeah, we're into autumn now in Australia. Uh, best time of the year for sailing. Normally blue skies, but today it's very overcast. So we thought, no, look, we'll pack and camp in his van and I'll put up a tent here. My name's Terry. Terry. And my brother. I'm Patrick. My brother Patrick, Patrick, hi. So this is a beautiful boat. What did you build this? Yeah, yeah. Three of us built it up in Grafton. That's where Ollie lived and we built it in her shed. And Pat was in Bathurst and I was in Sydney. And the idea is it was just a way of keeping contact with each other. Yeah, yeah. And Ollie really loved doing woodwork. She loved sailing. It's basically a Norwegian pram drawn up, the plans and everything are drawn by Francois Vivier. It became very popular in France, this one. Basically did it for the rivers, you know. It'd be a very good boat to row, wouldn't it? It's it not... is a nice boat. You can row with four people, or two. And how long did it take the three of you to build it? I reckon we're just thinking this morning, three to four years. Yeah. Yeah, you know, just meeting, because we, when I'd come up from Sydney, for example, I'd drive up one day, two days work, and then drive back. So it was, um, but then we could do things on our own as well. Like I could do the spas at home in Sydney. Yeah. Pat did the oars at home. Ollie did a bit of work up in Grafton. Right. I could do the centerboard case, <laughs> rudders and stuff like that. Um, you know, so you can do little things at your own place. Yeah. And then bit by bit, bring it all together. We've got a little electric motor in here. Yeah. Often we just have it on. Yeah, yeah. But today I didn't think we'd be using it. We're going to have a go with it this afternoon just to use up some battery. How do you sleep on this? Well, the floor panels, there's four of them, they, they can rest on here and that's thwarts. And sit from here onto the thwarts. And so you've got a complete uh, platform. Deck surface form, and you can put your tent on there. Wow. Or you can put a boom tent and sleep down. Yeah. Like Roger does, sleep down on that. So you've got enough room to actually turn over under the thwarts? Oh, I think you would do. It's slightly bigger than his boat, but yeah. the internal is very much like the allure. But I think you'd put a sleeping bag in there. Fantastic. Hello, Georgie. Hello, Georgie. Well, it's out of the Hello. Of the view, so it never Hello. Did you have a good sail? 
Did you have a good sale? Yeah. <laughs> Chuchi. Hello. Light conditions, <laughs> ballast tanks empty. Yeah. Squalls flood the tank. Yeah. Took me, takes about three, three to four minutes to flood the ballast tank. Right. And the boat just settled down totally. I didn't even have to yeah. reef. So and, and, and how long does it take you to pump it out? Well, it was like going to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the Wanji Wanji Caravan Park, just up here, around here in the headlands and all the way up around through here. Uh, it's a really nice spot to come camping. Uh, and they've got a nice little beach here, so uh, we often stop here for lunch. Very nice. It was a bit wet coming up and the wind did come up and then it dropped and uh, yeah, it did rain, but it seems to be holding off a bit now. It's quite warm, the water's quite warm. So uh, yeah, very good. Did you have a good sail? Did you get very wet? Ah, it was beautiful and it was wet. <laughs> and if I had to take um, no wind and no rain, or wind and rain, I think I'll go wind and rain. Well, it wasn't too cold, was it? Oh, beautiful temperature. So, Phil, I didn't realise it was your birthday. <laughs> Is that the 100 one over? Is that me? Yeah, how are you? So, how are you, Mark? Doing fine, thank you. Like you, you were racing past me at great speed, backwards and forwards. <laughs> the ugly duckling amongst the crew. No, there, you yes. were going really fast. Perfect weather for you guys. Yeah. This is Lynn, by the way. Oh. <laughs> nice to meet you. Have I met you before? You did. Yes, I've forgotten your name. Yeah. 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 And you <laughs> sailed past, I think. You were on board, that's right. Yeah. yeah point, and you were pointing out sharks. That's right. And then the last time I saw Mark, I said, are you coming on one? He said, no, it's uh, it's a romantic weekend or that's something. It. Yeah, it could have so, been. So, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when was that? <laughs> Me. <laughs> you weren't there. <laughs> So that's Wanji Wanji Caravan Park, where we had lunch. So there's a bit of rain around. It's Belmont over there and the sand dials to the right where we're heading. But we're just going to go for a bit of a sail first. I think there's a little more than six or eight knots, probably about ten knots. Big race going on up ahead out of Belmont. It is Saturday afternoon. So I suppose it's race day for a lot of clubs. dropped the main because uh, the wind had picked up a bit. I have one reef in, needed another reef, um, but it's just as easy to drop the main, so I dropped the main. You all right, Georgie? I'm over here. Hello. Georgie's my friend, because they give her Last one, no more. One for Chris. Come on for Chris. So Steve, your sleeping arrangement on the full mile, how's that work? I sleep with my torso up on the foredeck and yeah. then I've got some slats from the seats to the centreboard case. Four slats yeah. is all you need and they're just shock corded at either end oh, okay. to stop them moving and yeah. this um, tape just to stop yeah. them moving back and forth. Yeah. And how tall are you do you reckon? 5'8 oh, I think. No, how many? There's a heap of room. Oh, there's a mile of room. And this is the Ian Uhtred Fulmer, and unfortunately Ian Uhtred passed away uh, in the Isle of Skye last week. Yeah, designed many fantastic boats. Bruce, you've got an NS14. Now, you've normally got an O-Day Sailor, 
Why have you got an NS14? Okay, so I bought the NS14 uh, for $150. So it's, well, <laughs> it's micro budget cruising, dinghy cruising. Right. It, it looks like a windsurfer in as much as it looks very flat and very fast. Yeah, and very wet. But, uh, yeah, no, it's good fun. Um, so what are you, you going to do to it? You... Well, I've basically just got it operational so I can sail it first right. and then see if it was going to be worthwhile using as a raid boat, which yeah, yeah. it seemed to go okay today. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, uh, I'll pretty it up from here, I guess. And Does yeah. it need, I mean, it's fibreglass, so it doesn't, yeah, it there's no rot or anything. Really. No, no rot. I had to uh, rebuild the foils. They were all, had been uh, messed up and dinged up and right. glass by a five-year-old child, I think, because it was very really rough. <laughs> so I had to grind all that off. And, it's a bit harsh. And chill them. And, <laughs> and, like, they were. I've got photos of it. And, uh, and fix those up and, and do a bit of glassing for the thwart. But you're not going to get as much gear on it as you are on the O'Day. So. No. Well, it's only really for these sort of weekends on the lake and uh, for anything decent, any bigger trips, I'll still use the O'Day. Yeah. So. Steve's got a Bay Raider 17 as well, which was actually the inspiration for Chris to get his, which you've seen. Now, yours was 2016. Correct. Your boards are much bigger. Yeah, they just, uh, they just slot in between the, uh, uh, in the, in the middle there. Airbed. Airbed, sleeping, sleeping bag. bag. Cushions for... And, and, and it's it's so much room. You could actually sleep two people next to each other here, couldn't you? Well, I you think. Could fit four or five in here. <laughs> well, I'm about four or five, but yeah. And you've got a bimini extension. It overhangs the side of the boat, which is a good idea, really. It's, uh, it's going to it, deflect the water. A little bit of serendipity because it was not designed that way, but that's how it ended up. As I said earlier, we're not looking for perfection. No, and it works well though, doesn't well, it? It just works nicely. Yeah, I get plenty of airflow through. It's it's yeah, and we are expecting a bit of rain tonight, so uh, best be prepared. Indeed, I'll put the extra cover on tonight. So, Mark, you've made a homemade linkage yes. for your outboard to connect it to the tiller. Correct. How does that work? Uh, basically, what I've done is um, it's just PVC piping, the ball stoppers that you get on uh, for your rope stoppers, and a bit of uh, shock cord, which is from spear gun. So basically, that makes you a nice, tight connection that gives you a universal joint. And look at that. Oh, oh, very good. I also use it on my tiller extensions. And a couple of those on either end and you've got yourself a five meter tiller extension. <laughs> and on a boat this big, you probably need a yeah, five yeah, meter well, one. Yeah, yeah, when I want to sit out there. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm sitting out there having a beer, yes. <laughs> going to cook dinner so tonight because I know you're really interested I'm going to have I haven't had one of these for a while um, porcini mushroom risotto it's a continental continental uh, with real mushrooms and some spinach and I'm probably going to add a bit of milk rather than water to rehydrate it so it should be nice Porcini mushroom risotto with real mushrooms and spinach. Looks very nice. Go! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Well, we eventually left the sand isles. I had to jump out about four times and drag it over the sand. Uh, the tide had come up a bit, but obviously not enough. But the hardest thing is when it's overcast like this, it's really hard to see the bottom. Um, so you can't really see where the, the uh, deep pools are to get into. Anyway, we're off. It's pouring with rain. It's probably going to rain all the way back, but you know, it is what it is. At least there's a bit of wind. We didn't think there was going to be a lot of wind today, but uh, at least there's some wind. So that's where we were last night. Mark's still there. I think he's staying up here another day in his uh, trailer try. It's Bruce in his uh, NS14. I think this is what's meant by uh, coming home with a wet sail, because everything's wet. these to bit. This is uh, quite a nice sail back. So we're just going around the northern side of Pool Bar. Pool Bar Island over there because on the other side, the southern side, there's not much wind at all. So um, we've split. Three of us are going around this way, a couple are going around the other way. Anyway, the rain's sort of eased off a little bit. Still spitting, but um, it's okay. There's a cardboard marker here somewhere. There it is, okay. Don't want to hit the marker. Time for some more viewer photos. So it's been quite a nice run all the way back and now the rain has stopped and the, uh, there's a bit of blue sky, still a bit of wind. Um, so we're just heading back and doing a nice and gentle sail back. Um, so thanks again for watching Sailing Kate Louise and I'll see you on the water somewhere next time. Hopefully it won't be raining. Mm -hmm.